Hello, welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the cladding module in Price a Job. To access the cladding module, navigate to the Exterior Finishes category here in the module toolbar and select Cladding. This reveals several options, including cement board, tile cladding, or timber. We can feel free to select any of these because we can change our choice once we're inside the module. And click Create to create the module. And this opens the cement board module, and if we change our mind and we wish to convert this to tiles, we can just simply click here within the main stage, Tile Cladding, or Timber Cladding. And once we have our specifications set, this makes for a quick and convenient way for us to compare costs which are displayed here in the left sidebar. This is Tile Cladding, and here's the pricing for cement board. So clearly tiles are the most expensive. Cement cladding is usually fiber cement planks. They are typically 8 mm thick, 150 mm or 6 inches wide, and 3.6 meters in length. And as we can see from the sketch, they are fixed with stainless steel nails to battens mounted to the wall. To start, we'll put the area of wall to receive cladding. If we know the area already, we can just input it directly here in the area field. If not, we can click on the area calculator, and this gives us several options. If we've already done an estimate module for the external walls, we can access it here in the library. And here we'll see the various walls that we've already created, along with their respective areas. If the wall that we need to clad is listed here in the library, we can simply select that, and it is added here to our calculator. For now, let's delete this one and take a look at another method. Here under the Rooms tab, we can view the various rooms of the house, as well as their floor and wall area. Now this requires to be set up in advance, or we can simply do it here from within the calculator by clicking the Edit Rooms button. And here we can add rooms, or floors, or edit the measurements of the existing rooms. When we have a measurement here that we wish to use, in our current module we can simply click the plus button and this is added to our area calculator. Finally, we also have the Add Spaces tab. And here we can calculate the area based on the various dimensions of the wall. So for example, if it was just a regular wall, we could click the square space here, set our height at 2.4 meters, and our width at 30. Price job calculates that as being 72 meters, and we can save that, and this is added to our calculator. But let's say this wall was irregular shaped, like perhaps it expands to a mezzanine. So here we could click the right trapezoid, and we could set our beginning height at 2.4 meters, our expanded height at 3.4 meters, and the width of this wall at 5 meters. And save. And Price Job calculates that total area and adds it to our calculator. Now let's say that we have some door openings that do not need cladding. Again, we can just go to the Add Space button here, select a square, and this time we will add 2.1 meters for the height of the door, and 0.9 meters for the width, and this time we will select here from the operation, rather than adding this to the area, we will select this and choose minus. And save that to our calculator. And now this door space has been removed from our total calculation. And if we have more than one door, we can simply increase the quantity. Say we have two. And this is automatically calculated and removed from the total area. Once we're satisfied with our calculations, we can click save and this updates here in the main stage. If at any time we need to revisit our work, we can simply click on the area calculator again, and all of our measurements are stored here for our future reference. Next, we can tell the system whether this is to be a new installation, a replacement, or decorating only. As a new installation, we are provided all the stages that we'll require to install the cladding. If we select a replacement, an extra stage is added for the preparation. And if we select that, we can make accommodations for the preparation, materials, and removal of debris. For preparation, we can take a look and see that in the Price of Job library, certain common tasks such as filling holes and cracks, sanding and filling, removing paint, wet cleaning, pressure wash, smoothing walls or ceiling are all added here based on a standard rate per square meter. So for example, if we needed to pressure wash the wall, we could add that here and then adjust the area in square meters, say 80 square meters, and this is automatically added to our calculation as part of the preparation for removal. 
Next, let's say we might require some materials for the removal of the old wall cladding. Here under the materials library, we have categories for sealants, fillers, building chemicals, gloss paints, metal paints, primers and undercoats, self-adhesive rolls, scrim tape, dust sheets, rendering beads, and drywall screws. So perhaps we'll require at very minimum some dust sheets so we can select a polyback and a cotton twill and maybe we need two of these and three of these and this is added to our preparation materials. And note that in addition to adding the materials to our estimate stage, Price and Drop has automatically calculated the labor for installing these accessories here within the estimate as well. So here we can see they've assigned these to a general builder with an estimate of one and a quarter hours. Next, we can access the removal library. And here Price and Drop has a library of common removal tasks. For example, under the wall finishes category, we have remove plasterboard, remove plaster, remove cement rendering, ceramic or porcelain tiles, cladding, strip off wallpaper, or wall preparation. We also have categories for ceiling finishes, concrete demolition, landscaping, plumbing and heating, roof, floor finishes, walls and chimneys, woodwork, and building and outbuildings. So for this example, let's select the wall finishes and let's say that we'll be removing some cladding and this will be approximately 80 square meters. And price job calculates the labor for this and adds this to our preparation stage. And here we can see the labor to remove the cladding. And in addition, price job has automatically added a new category for plant and tool for a six yard skip in order to remove the debris. And we can see that represented here in the side stage that the estimated disposal volume of 80 square meters of cladding will result in approximately 3.2 cubic meters of debris. And this would require a six yard skip. The calculation estimates that this would only require 70% of a six yard skip. But if we were to combine this with other modules, the system will automatically combine the debris to maximize your usage of the same skip. In this case, this is the only disposal job we have. So we'll just round this up to one full whole number. And we can see that that's represented in the estimate stage here. If we wish to show these materials in our description, we can simply check this box here to show the various removal and preparation materials that will be required. If you feel that's too much information for the client, you can simply deselect this and close the preparation window once it's complete. Next, we'll take a look at the membrane that we'll be mounting underneath the buttons. Here we can use the select box to see a variety of membranes available, and we can select the one that's most appropriate for this job. In addition, we can click the cog button here and we can set the percentage of overlap for the membrane sheets so that price of job will be able to most accurately calculate exactly how much membrane sheet will require. If we don't require a membrane for this job, we can simply deselect. In this case, we certainly do, so we'll keep that activated. Next, we'll take a look at the battens. Here we can select from the drop down menu to choose the battens that we wish to use, and then we can specify whether we prefer to use hammer fix screws or nails for this job. If we're fixing the battens to masonry, usually we would use hammer fix screws. If we're mounting it to a timber frame, then we would use nails. If we click the cog, we can adjust the spacing of the battens and the fixings. The default settings are appropriate, so we'll keep them as is. Next, we'll take a look at the hardy plank cladding. Here we can select the drop down list and choose from the options available, or we can set a cladding allowance and simply set an estimate for what we expect the cladding to cost, or we can specify supplied by client. And as we make these changes, our description is automatically updated to show that in this case, the cement cladding is supplied by the client. For this example, we'll choose some cedar patterned plank. If we chose cladding allowance, we could override the estimated price of the planks here, say 15 pounds. And as we do, our estimate pane here will automatically highlight this in yellow. And this lets us know that we've overridden the value from the system. And although we've input 15 here and 18 is shown on the estimate, this is because this includes our profit. To adjust our profit margins, we can click the cog here in the lower left. And as we adjust the price of our materials, we can see in the background that the price of our hardy plank is also increasing. So if we set our profit margin to a standard 20%, then our $15 planks 
are valued at 18 on the estimate. If we choose to remove the profit from our estimate, we can see this reverts to the cost of £15 as we've input for our allowance. In this case, we definitely want to show our profit. And while we're here, we can also specify whether we are VAT registered. If not, we can deselect. And if we are, we'll select yes. So because this allowance is quite low, what we'll do is we'll select this cog here beside the overridden value, and we will reset this back to the system default. And this has been updated here in the side stage as well. It's reverted back to 25 pounds. Next, we'll take a look at the decorating cladding stage. Cladding is usually pre-painted, so this is not often required. And if that's the case for you, you can simply deselect this stage. However, it may be needed under specific circumstances, like if the customer decides to change the color or you require a specific color not available from the manufacturer. In that case, we can select this and then specify whether we'll be applying gloss, oil, wood stain, varnish, or none. We'll select an oil paint, and then we can click the settings cog here to specify the number of oil coats that we'll be applying. And if we wish, we can override the oil coverage in square meters per liter. The system will automatically provide a default based on the manufacturer's standard recommendations. We can consult the tub of paint for the specific manufacturer's recommendation for that type of paint. And similar to what we saw above with the replacement preparation stage, we're also offered a painting preparation stage here. So we can select this. And if we have any holes or cracks to fill or sand and fill or smooth the walls or ceiling, or we have other needs in terms of fillers, adhesives, sealants, primers and undercoats, gloss paints, wood stain, wood oil, or varnish, we can access all those here within the library. In this case, because we'll be putting up a new installation, we don't require any removal of these items. However, perhaps we might need a bit of a filler. Let's add a little bit of decorator's caulk. And perhaps we'll need a few tubes of that. And this is automatically added to our decorating cladding stage. Here we have our oil. And if we choose to override this, we can simply select this and choose from a different oil paint here within the price of job library. So let's select this one instead. Here's our decorator's caulk and the labor for applying the oil. Next, we'll take a look at the accessory stage. And this opens the price of job library where we can add any cladding accessories that may be required, sealants, nails, screws, or plugs that we may need. So most of the materials that we we'll require will already be added to our stages. But in this case, let's be sure to add some corners and trims. So here's some external metal corner and some hardy trim. And we'll just adjust the quantity of those here and save. And we can see that the accessories stage is updated to show six items. And if we scroll in the estimate pane to see the details, we can see our materials here, as well as the anticipated labor for installing these accessories. And this gives us a complete estimate for a cement board cladding application. Now, if we're interested in looking at tile cladding, we can simply convert this module to tiles by clicking the icon here. And you'll notice that our area and other settings are still complete. However, the stage for the hardy plank cladding has now been replaced with a tile cladding stage. We can just click on the drop down to select a style of tile from the price of job library. You might also require some additional tile and a halves for trims around the windows or other uses. Simply input the quantity that you will require and price of job will make the calculation. Then we'll need to know the width of the wall and this is represented in eaves length. So this is the horizontal width of the wall across the top and bottom. Let's input here four meters. Next, we have to specify the corner length. Let's say, for example, that we have dormers that need external corners. So in this example, there would be two sides, each at 2.4 meters. So this would be a total of 4.8 meters. And as we make our adjustments, price of job updates our tile cladding stage here in the estimate. Here for our corner length, we can see the external angle tiles left and right. And price of job has automatically calculated the quantity required. Here we see our 100 tile and halves, our eaves tiles based on the length that we input, the total number of nails required, which is automatically calculated for us, and our plain tiles required for the wall. In addition, we see the labor for the installation of the tiles. And to update our example, because we're applying tile now, we won't be requiring the decorating cladding, so we'll simply deselect that. And we can update the accessories by clicking the accessory select. And we can choose here from the cladding accessories, sealants, nails, screws, and plugs. If we require an accessory that is not shown here in the accessories panel, we can simply input one manually by scrolling to the accessory stage here in the estimate and then selecting add new material, or if we prefer add new labor, new plant and tool, or other costs. In this case, 
Let's add a plant and tool, like a cherry picker or a scissor lift. This opens the Press a Job library, and from here we can simply type in our search term and select the item. And we'll see that added to the accessory stage here in the estimate pane. And we can adjust the quantity if required and the term. In this case, we may require it for five days or maybe five weeks. If there's an item that you wish to add to the Price a Job library, you can access that by going to the Company tab and under the Resources section, select Materials. Here you can browse the entire Price a Job library of materials, search it, or add new items. If there's a material that you only plan to use once and you prefer not to add it to the library, you can simply add it one time manually by clicking the Add New Material button. And rather than searching from the library, you could just input the detail here. For example, perhaps a brush, 5 inch, and we could set the price of this at 5 pounds and input our quantity. This material is now stored only within this project. Also within this module, we can convert this to timber cladding, in which case the cladding stage is updated for timber. Here we simply select the timber style we wish from the Price of Job library, and perhaps in this case we would select the decorating cladding, and select the style of paint that we would use, in this case perhaps a wood stain. And once we've configured all of our options, it makes it very simple to cycle between the various styles of cladding and compare our prices. So for example, timber in this example is 8900 compared to tile at 15,000 versus cement board at 10,000. And all of our preferences are saved regardless of the style we end up choosing. And you'll have noticed that the description here has been automatically updating as we input all of our details. If we deselect a stage, that information is removed from the description as well. If we have a note that we'd like to add that is independent of any of these stages, we can use the add note function here. And then whatever notes that we leave here will remain posted in the description regardless of how many stages we deselect. Here all of our stages are deselected with no descriptions left except for the note that we input manually. Now when we go to the reports tab, we can structure the quote that we wish to send to the client. We can choose either a simple quote, which only shows the basic details and the grand total, or advanced, which displays much greater detail and gives us the option of displaying certain items of the quote or not. For example, the description we can remove, or the materials, or the labor, plant and tool, other costs. We can also conceal the pricing for a table of quantities or the units. And in addition to all these settings, we can also adjust the level of subtotals that are shown. So for example, here we have only the grand total. Here we can increase the subtotals to include subtotals for each of the modules. Or we can also increase the subtotals to include the breakdown of materials, labor, plant and tool, and other costs. So you have an enormous amount of flexibility with how you structure your quotes. From here, you can print the quote, export it as a PDF, a Word document, or email it directly within Price a Job. And that's how to use the cladding module. Thank you for using Price a Job.